This video is going to be a demonstration of how to record audio in Pure Data. Uh, I'm doing this demo because I want to make more demonstrations of Pure Data. And without installing additional software, there's no way to record the system audio. So instead of recording system audio, I'll just make files of what I'm doing in Pure Data. And then when I go to edit the video, I can, I can put the sound in on top of it and line it up with, with what I'm doing. There's plenty of other videos on this topic, but I'm just showing the way that I do it. So first I'm going to put a DAC because I want it to also output the sound. And then I'm also going to put write SF, which is how you write to a sound file. Um, and I need to put that there's two channels, left and right. And I want this to be something I can just drop in. Uh, to other pure data designs. So I'm going to put these inlets. I'm using command D to make copy, a duplication of what I have selected. And I've noticed in per data that if I hold shift, I can draw multiple connections, which is pretty convenient. If you look at the help document for write SF, you'll see that you need um, open. And then this dollar sign one is going to take some value uh, for a file name, which we'll do in a second. We need start to start recording, and we need stop to stop recording. And then I've noticed also if we select all three of these and then connect it here, they should all connect. Yep. So we need to make a file name. So make file name. Uh, percent s dot wave we connect that to the open and that percent s is going to take some string as its input and what I would like to do is um, have the essentially what I want is when I use this I, it'll automatically create a file name every time and that file name will be unique so that I'm not actually writing over other files and that I don't have to come up with a name beforehand every time I record something. So what I want is I'm going to make an object called PD date time. And in that, I'm going to use ISO date, which outputs the date in a very specific format. Um, I've noticed that you can open it, and so I'm going to copy what's in there, and I'm going to paste it in here, because I'm going to make changes to it. So I don't need this anymore, but what I do want is ISO time, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to open it, and I'm going to copy what's inside. Don't need that anymore. Um, so I'm going to combine these so that there's actually just one out, outlet, uh, and it's actually going to combine all into one string or one symbol rather. I don't want the dashes there, so I want it to be essentially um, year, month, day underscore, and then I want the time, and the time is going to be hours, minutes, seconds. That way whenever I make a new file name it's going to have the date and the time attached to it. So the good thing about that is every time I make a new file it's going to have a unique name. So now I'm going to modify this pack. Essentially I'm just going to put the contents of this one into here also. So I'll just say float symbol symbol. Now I can get rid of that. Connect these. I don't need this inlet or this bang because I have one over here. Um, I've noticed what I do need to do here is put uh, Take a step back here. So 
So I'm using this so that things happen in the right order. So there needs to be a bang on this side first because everything goes from right to left uh, in the in terms of when it's performed. So now this should be creating my date and time in the format that I want. Oops. Uh, so I'm going to save this. This whole thing I'm going to call DAC Rec because it's the DAC and it records. And actually, I'm going to call it D underscore and the D's for demo just because I actually have one of these already and I don't want to get it confused. So as I make these demo things, I'm going to put D in front of them. You can call it whatever you want though. So now, just to test this, if we put a bang here at the input, and then print at the output. When I bang this, we should read over here. Uh, there, yeah. So it's the date and the time. If I do it again, you'll see that the time changes. Just a few seconds have gone by. So now if I connect this here, it should write the date and time to that file name. Next we need to, I want a switch that will initiate recording and stop recording. So then by putting this select object, it'll determine if the toggle is set to zero or one. When it sets to zero, I want it to stop a recording. When it sets to one, uh, I need to do a couple of things. So the first thing I needed to do is to make the file name. And then the second thing is to start the recording. So now I think this should be everything I need. Um, if I want to have access to this toggle box, when I use this, I need to uh, go to preferences and do graph on parent. And then when I do that, you'll see this. Let's move this. I can't move it for some reason. I think that was just a little glitch. Uh, I'm not going to try to get perfect with this, but we'll make it a little smaller. Uh, probably get away with like 25. Save this. So now if I open a new... So now when I use DACREC, D underscore Rec. I have my checkbox, and so if I check that, I should be able to create a sound file. So now what I'll do is go back. And so there it automatically created this file. And then if I check it again, it'll make a new one. And that is that. So coming up in the future, I'll show how I made this kick drum also. So please check back for that. Thank you for watching. I hope you find this helpful. If there's anything I did weird, feel free to point it out if you see a better way to do something. Um, I'm not an expert on this. I'm just showing the way I do things. I hope you enjoyed this.